we're going to uh, cover work and energy, begin covering work and energy. And so this will be the next chapter on the homework, or the next chapter, and you all have this homework, right? Yeah. That we handed out. If you didn't come up and get one after class. Um, so we have to understand kind of work and energy and all that stuff. Um, real quickly, I'll just tell you what the definition of, uh, of kinetic energy is. Uh, this is the energy associated with the movement of a mass. So kinetic energy. Is, uh, the energy due to movement of a mass. It is, I'll write it as KE, sometimes I'll write it as a K. Sometimes, if I'm not very, very careful, I might write T, but don't worry about that. It's one half times the mass of the object times the speed of the object squared. So anything with a mass that's moving with some speed will have this kinetic energy. Um, unless it's relativistic, which we're not worried about. And uh, that's, so that's just a definition, well, it's pretty much a definition. And energy, let's see what the units of energy are. So if I have a kilogram here, a speed here that's squared, the unit of energy would be kilograms meters squared per second squared. And that turns out to have a special name, that's a joule, symbolized with a J. Okay, and SI units. So the SI units of energy, the, the standard units of energy that will, are joules. Okay. <coughs> and you can do some simple plugging in numbers um, just to get a sense of what, how much energy something has. Let's say I have a baseball. Or anyone know what the mass of a baseball is? <coughs> well, let's say mass is about uh, 0 0.25 kilograms. And let's say it's being thrown pretty fast. So maybe 70 something miles an hour. So let's say V is about 30 meters per second. So what would be the energy of the baseball? Just one half, 0 0.25 times 30 squared joules. That would be one half, 0 0.25, 900. So this would be four, four fifth of the movement. Take a quarter of that. So yeah, something like that. And uh, that's how much. That's, so, so that's like a typical type energy that you have. This is very, very easy right now. <laughs> very simple. All right. Now, let's suppose that you have a force that is pulling an object. What's that? Yeah, is so energy joules are not just meters times newtons. Well, so, so what's a newton? That's kilogram per second. Times one newton is equal to one kilogram meters per second squared. So if I multiply by one newton times a meter, that would be a kilogram meter squared per second squared, which is a joule. But the strange thing is, is that a torque 
which is measured in Newton meters, is generally not considered an energy. Um, well, it's even though it has the same units. So uh, when I write Newton meters, I'll generally mean a torque, and joules will be uh, the energy. Okay. So like the problems that we've been doing NM for, uh -huh. that's the same amount of joules that thing has? That No, that's a torque, and uh, they're, they're separate type, physical quantities. Oh. It's a force times a distance. It has the same unit looking thing as a joule. But if I call a newt, but if, if I say something's a newton meter, I'll be talking about torques, Not usually. Torques. And uh, if I'm uh, talking about joules, it'll be joule. Energies, it'll be joules. I know that that part gets a little confusing, and uh, but it is what it is. <coughs> okay, let's say I have a a force on an object. Okay, it's just what we're going to do. Is we, let's say that we, I have some sort of mass that's being pulled over uniform ground from rest by a force F. And let's say there's no friction. So there's only one force on this that uh, does any that, that does anything, and that's this this force. Okay. You can say that there's gravity. You know, there's gravity normal force, but they'll cancel out, mm -hmm. and, and there's no friction, so it's not important. All right. So there's one force on this object that's doing anything. That's causing an acceleration. We can see how this force actually. We'll give it kinetic energy, and we're hopefully we'll start. We'll see a relation between force and kinetic energy. Okay, and this is what we'll deal with, and uh, this is something that we'll call end up calling work done by a force. So to start out, um, first of all, we know that if this starts at rest, that the speed, and we're only talking about motion in the x direction, so this will be velocity in the x direction, uh, would be equal to the acceleration that it has times the time that it's accelerating for, right? Well, if there's one force on this in the x direction, what would be the magnitude of the acceleration? So force let's say magnitude of the force over the mass, right? That would be oh, the acceleration, right. wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take this, let's put that into here. V is force, magnitude of the force times the mass, uh, oh, not times, divided by the mass times the time. Now let's say in the time t, you know, this thing's moving. It starts out at rest and then it starts moving. Um, so maybe at a time t later, it's here. And it's moved a distance, d. Uh, let's move it to the corresponding part, d. And this distance would be equal to the average speed, and so we'll bar over that to indicate average, times the time that it moved for. So if I wanted to solve for this time, I could write this time in terms of d over the average speed would be the time that it was moving for. Now, Average speed, if it starts out at rest, it would be, well, average speed is defined as V initial plus V final over T. So, if at a time T later it's traveling with a speed V, and it started out with a speed zero, I could say that the average speed would be 0 plus v over 2, that would just be v over 2. Okay. Well, 
let's take this and put it into here. So I would get d times 2 over b is equal to the time. <coughs> How did you get v over 2 again over there? Well, I had the initial speed is 0. Oh. The final speed, that the speed v that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The average speed would be those two things divided by 2. And that just gives you v over 2. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this and put it into here for the time. <coughs> and so I end up with V is equal to F over M times T, which is 2 D over V. I'm going to put the V over here, put the M over here, and divide by the 2. And so when I do that, I get one half m v squared is equal to force times the distance it moved. This is an interesting equation. That tells me that if I start out at zero kinetic energy, I'll gain kinetic energy when I apply a force and the object moves in the direction of that force. Okay. So this is the kinetic energy. And this F times D, that's called the work on the object. Force times distance. <coughs> it's work. Is that V squared right there? Yeah. Oh, okay. V squared, yep. All right, so this tells me that something called work is related to <coughs> kinetic energy. Now, I'm going to give you the a slightly more formal definition, which hopefully you can kind of see from this derivation I did. You can see that if the force were instead at some angle like this, that, and, but it was still on the ground and not accelerating in that direction, that the, uh, it would be only the x component of the force that would be moving it, right? In which case, um, I would actually replace f with f cosine of theta here. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, this is actually the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And in our case, it just happened the initial kinetic energy was zero. The general rule is that the, the final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy of the object is equal to the work done on the object and the general formula for work done, total work, is uh, the sum of the work done by all the forces, which are F D cosine of the angle in between the forces and the distance moved. So work done, this is work done by a force F. Some of FD. Okay. And I guess force the vector, so I'd write it like this. All right, let's see if we can make some sense out of this. And we'll do some examples. And then I'll let you guys do something. Is it always going to have the cos? It's not always going to have the cosine there, though, right? In, in general, it will. Because like usually it's going to have a. Oftentimes, that cosine of theta will be 1. Okay? Okay. All right. So let's do a simple problem. We'll start out 
was simple, and then we'll work our way up. Let's say I have a 10 kilogram mass that's being pulled by a force of 100 newtons, and it travels a distance of two meters. What is speed? Well, let's start. What is kinetic energy of object after two meter after after two meters of travel? It starts out at rest. And so on this one, I'll just apply I, this object this. Uh, is the one force doing work because that's the force that causes, that's the only force causing any acceleration. Um, we can say that there's a normal force here and a weight force downward. Let's see if we can, we can, we can see that these forces are, will, will cause zero, uh, zero work. Let's see why. So the distance is here. So D vector is like that, right? The distance traveled. So normal force, the work done by the normal force, work by normal force, that would be the magnitude of the normal force times the di magnitude of the distance traveled, which is two meters times cosine of the angle in between the normal force and that D. What is that angle? Zero. Well, D's going this way, right? Degrees. And normal oh. force is going up, towards, right? So that'd be cosine of 90 degrees. What's cosine of 90 degrees? Zero. Yeah. So the work done by the normal force, zero. And that will always be the case, actually. The normal force doesn't do any work because it's always perpendicular to the distance traveled. The normal so force when it's on a surface, sliding over a surface. Since that's zero, everything is going to be zero. Well, how about this? How about the work done by the weight? Uh. So what would be the work done by the weight? The weight times. Okay, the mg. Good. Times the distance. Times the distance, d, okay. And then times, cosine. times cosine of the angle in between the distance and the weight force. Mm -hmm. What is this angle? Distance is that way? It's still in Or weights downwards. Mm -hmm. So. Cosine of 90 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. And what would that be? Zero. Because co cosine of 90 degrees is zero. All right, how about the work done by this force? Work done by force F. Can you guys see that down there? Yep. A little bit, okay. <coughs> All right, then it's F. What's the work done by that force? 100 newtons. So, so it would be angle to the force, 100 newtons? Mm -hmm. Times the distance, 2 meters. Times 2 meters. Times cosine of the angle in between D and this force. What's that angle? Zero. 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 Cosine of zero. What's cosine of zero degrees? One. 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 Cosine of zero degrees is one. one. Okay. So that's just 200 newton meters, but it's a joule in this case. That's cool. All right. So if the work done is 200 joules, what does that mean about the kinetic energy? Yeah, the change in kinetic energy is always the total, total work done. 
So that means that the kinetic energy final, and uh, if the kinetic energy, if the initial kinetic energy is zero, um, it's going to be 200 joules. So is that because it started at rest? Yeah. That, that it. That the initial is zero. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Could you then get the speed of the object? Yeah. How do you do that? One half m v squared is equal to 200 joules. This is 10, so that'd be like five. Yeah. Five kilograms. Divide by that, I get v squared is equal to 40 meters per second squared. So square root of 40. 6.32 meters per second. Okay, you didn't have to deal with kinematics on that one, did you? But if you did, if you found the acceleration in the x direction, put it in the kinematic, what the v should be, you know, which is v is equal to initial velocity plus a t, you should get the same thing. Okay. But then you have to figure out what the T, you know, the T is to move two meters, all that stuff. All right. Let's do let's do the next complicated thing. respect to horizontal. And not only that, but there's a coefficient of friction 0 0.1. Let's see if we can figure out the speed of the object after it moves. Um, after it moves two meters. After object moves. <coughs> what will be the speed of the object, and we'll base that on kinetic energy. So we've added a little bit of complication to this. by all the forces. So, will normal force do any work here? Will gravity do any work? No. Uh, those things are perpendicular to the distance moved, which is straight along the floor. Is there a case that where they would be doing? Like well, yeah. Well, yeah. If we were on like a slope? Yeah. Oh. Like, uh, yeah, if you're on a, if you're on a, if you're falling down, gravity will be doing work. Okay. Um, if you're in an elevator that's being pushed upwards, the normal force is doing work on the person in the elevator. But if you're sliding over a nice flat surface, no, it won't do that. The, uh, the gravity force can do work on a hill, but the normal force won't. All right. Uh, what other, so what other force do I have on this? Kinetic. So kinetic. Or friction so going the backwards. The friction. So I have a friction force like this, right? Mm -hmm. And what's okay. the magnitude of that friction force? Normal force times the coefficient. Normal force times mu. K. Okay, what's the magnitude of the normal? Yeah, just be in this case, it's m g mu k. I can see that because I have a normal force upwards, weight downwards, and they have to balance each other. Mm -hmm. Don't you have to take into account the 
component of the force that's in the Y? No, that's yeah, not, yeah, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh, yes, I do, actually. For the... <laughs> for the Thanks, you brought this up. Very important. Because then the normal, normal force yes. won't just be MG. I do. Uh, nice catch. <laughs> All right, so let's do some of the forces in the Y direction. That would be the MD downwards, right? Mm -hmm. Plus normal force. The Y component oh, of the, the but plus the normal force, force right? Yeah. Plus the Y component of that hundred newtons. And what would that be? Uh, 100 sine 20. Sine. Plus 100 newtons sine of 20 degrees. And that's equal to MAY, which is zero, right? Good. <coughs> um, and uh, so if I wanted to solve for the normal force, what would I do? Take everything else to the other. Yeah. So normal force is equal to uh, mg minus 100 newtons sine of 20 degrees. This was 98 newtons minus 100 newtons sine of 20 degrees. And so what is that? figure out the work done on this object, which will give us the, the, the kinetic, the change in kinetic energy of the object, which will then allow us to uh, um, find what the speed of the object is. It makes sense what, we, what the logic is. We're going to find the total work done. This will be the change in kinetic energy. This will allow us to figure out what the speed of the object is. So if we get a look at the work done by each force, what's the work done by this 100 Newton force? Work done by F is equal to what? Uh, the force. So it would be 100 Newtons, the force. Mm -hmm. Times the distance. Times the distance that, that the object moved two meters. Mm -hmm. Times cosine, cosine of the distance. angle in between that force and the distance, mm -hmm. which was? Okay. And what would that be? 187.9. Is that work? You don't do force? you don't do the force in just the x direction. You do the whole force. <coughs> yep. Uh, yeah, it turns out to be the same thing as just doing the distance times the force in the x direction. But okay. you, but just put the magnitude of the full force there. Yeah. Okay. 187.9 joules. Yes. Okay. okay. How about the work done by the friction force? And the friction force. So the friction force was? 6.38 newtons. Good. Times Distance two was 2 meters. And what's the angle in between the friction force? Zero. Cosine zero. Zero. Friction zero. force is that way, distance moved is that way. So friction force is that way. Mm -hmm. distance oh, 180. That way. Okay, yeah. So 180 degrees, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. 
Now, what's the cosine of 180 degrees? Negative 1. So this is negative 1. So it's a negative. So 6 point, so what does that become? 12.6, negative. Negative 12.76 joules. All right, so the total work is the sum of the work done by all the forces. The gravity force and normal force aren't doing anything. So I just add these two things together. What about that force over there then? The 60 days or that's a normal, normal force. force. It yes. doesn't do any work. It doesn't. Because oh, okay. the normal force is upwards. Uh -huh. The distance traveled this way, okay. the cosine of the angle between is zero. zero. Okay. Wait, can you show to me again how you got 180? 180. Okay. So the distance traveled is that way. The friction force is that way. So okay, it's the so angle we're doing between it with the distance, those. Not the, okay. I yeah. see. Okay. Hmm. All right, so what's the total work done? <coughs> so we add those. So you add those two numbers, and what do you get? 175.14. Cool. Good. That's the total work done. If this thing started out at rest, this would be equal to, well, this is the final kinetic energy minus the initial <coughs> kinetic energy. I'm going to say that this is zero. <coughs> if it starts out at rest, it's zero. Mm -hmm. And so, and the formula for this is one half m v squared. So final velocity squared. And so if I want to solve for this, I'm going to take this work, multiply by two, divide by m, and that'll give me v squared. So um, one seventy-five point one four joules times 2 divided by the mass, which is 10 kilograms, is equal to V final squared. So what are you subbing that for? I, like what letter? For V? For M? So M was 10 kilograms, right? Yeah, but where did you sub in 175 for? That's the work. For the work. Um, <coughs> the work is equal to 1 half M. Oh, we're equally, okay. okay. I multiply both sides of this by 2, mm -hmm. divide by m, and then get v final squared. And if I wanted that v final, I'll just take the square root of that. And what do you get? 5.918. What's that? 5.9. Sorry, 5.9 meters per second. Now, logic of what we did. Total work, set that equal to change in kinetic energy. From there you get this, you can get the speed. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do something a little bit else, a little bit different. This time, we won't start out at rest, and I'm gonna let you guys do this one. So why don't you go, get in a group of three. We're not going to do it on whiteboard. We'll just try and just we'll shout out a number. When your group is done, hold up your hands. Three, four, something like that. And uh, when your group is done with this, hand up, hold up your hand. And then <coughs> tonight we'll race you. So on this one, um, here's the question. <coughs> Initially, we have a 10 kilogram mass that is traveling at a speed of 10 meters per second. Okay? It has, there's a coefficient of kinetic friction, mu k, and this thing moves a distance of 2 meters. So one, what is work done by friction? And two, what's 
the final speed of the object. What is it you, you So the, oh, this thing travels two meters. What's the coefficient? Oh, UK is 0 0.1, sorry. Okay. So it's
Nah, I forgot my calculator. <laughs> but I will. We'll, we'll do it real quick. Um, so, first of all, we know that the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy is equal to the work done by the forces. The only work done by the forces is the friction force. Mm -hmm. The work done by the friction force is um, the friction force, magnitude of the friction force, times the distance moved, mm -hmm. times the cosine of the angle of the <coughs> distance, and the force. What was that? 180, 180 degrees. <coughs> So this would get this negative one. So that's uh, the friction, the magnitude of the friction force is mu k times the normal force. There's no anything pulling it up, so the normal force will be mg in this case, which is 9.8 newtons. <coughs> okay, take this, substitute it in for the f, and so you get work negative 9.8 times 2 meters, which is negative 19.6 mm -hmm. joules. All right, that is the, the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So I can write this as 1 half m, the final squared minus 1 half m, the initial squared is negative 19.6 joules. I can separate out, factor out a one half m from this. V final squared minus V initial squared is negative 19.6 joules. I can divide by two over, I can multiply by two over m. So V final squared minus V initial squared is two over m times negative 19.6 joules. I can put a minus sign on everything, like this. I can bring this initial over to here. It's equal to, well, I probably shouldn't have put the minus sign on, but anyway, minus negative the initial squared plus 2 over m, that's 19.6 joules. <coughs> I can get rid of that minus sign. By putting a minus sign on everything. So I get V final squared is V initial squared minus 2m, 2 over m times 19.6. Take square root. This is square root of 100 meters squared per second squared minus 2 times 19.6 over 10. Um, so that'd be 19.6 joules over 5, 19.6 over 5 meters squared per second squared. It's on the order of 4. If I plug in numbers and take the square root, it should be about 9.8. This is only, this is on like 90, this is like 4 here. Close to 4, so. See what I did? Just did found the total work, which is only the friction force, set that equal to the change in kinetic energy. Good?